When I say the words Muay Thai, what do you think of? The powerful leg kicks, the elbows and the knees, the clinch work and the sweeps? Well, I think of when you accidentally kick someone's elbow in sparring and then can't walk right for a couple days. And that leads me perfectly into the topic of today's video. It's pretty clear that the most important striking art that you need to have an understanding of in the sport of MMA is Muay Thai. Boxing is very limited, you can only use your hands. Kickboxing is also pretty limited, you can only use your hands, your legs, and your knees if you're fighting professionally. But Muay Thai encompasses all aspects of striking. Hands, legs, knees, elbows, clinch, sweeps. The standard Muay Thai stance is standing tall, hands right above your eyebrows, lead leg is very light, even bouncing, and you stand square to your opponent. But despite Muay Thai being the best striking art, you don't really see that stance used in MMA. And also, we've had lifelong wrestlers transition to MMA, lifelong jiu-jitsu practitioners, lifelong kickboxers, and they've all had a lot of success. But in Thailand, kids at the age of 5 get sent off to Thai camps to train Muay Thai and be the breadwinners for the family. With that being such a common practice, how come we've never seen one of these lifelong Thai fighters make the transition to the UFC? Well, we're going to explore all those questions together. The last few years, we've seen a huge rise in the amount of calf kicks. It is a devastating attack that does not take many clean kicks to finish a person with. Now, you'd think that standard Muay Thai stance that I described is the perfect antidote for that attack. And it pretty much is. But there's a reason why fighters don't use it. Do you guys remember when Khalil Roundtree Jr. fought Eric Anders at UFC 236? Khalil Roundtree came out in that fight with a textbook Muay Thai style and completely ate Eric Anders alive. Everybody who watched that fight immediately after was like, wow, you cannot stand with that guy. His Muay Thai was too good. But what happened in his very next fight? He fought a very good grappler who immediately took him down and smashed his face with elbows and got a pretty early stoppage. You see, in order to complete a takedown, you need to get underneath the hips of your opponent. That is why wrestlers stand really low to the ground to make this really difficult to do. When you're fighting in a Muay Thai stance, standing straight up, you're basically asking for someone to dive onto your legs. Ever since that fight, Khalil has needed to mix his Muay Thai in with a more standard MMA stance. A heavier, more planted base to defend the wrestling. But what if a fighter, hypothetically, didn't need to worry about the takedowns? Could they then use the more standard Muay Thai stance to their advantage? Well, a certain someone does. Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira is so skilled off his back that he doesn't care about being taken down. In fact, most of his opponents don't want to take him to the ground. Against Islam Machef, Charles did switch his style to be a bit more wrestling defensive, but in almost all his other fights, he uses a textbook Muay Thai style. Standing tall, being light on that front leg, using it to teep and hide kicks behind it. Against Justin Gaethje, who was seen as the way better striker going into that matchup, could not land any calf kicks, and because of that, really struggled getting his game going, got dropped on the feet, and then finished. The only issue is, not a lot of people can use that style and be effective, unless you're someone with the skill level on the ground as Charles Oliveira, who does not worry about getting taken down, you can't use that same stance. Against a talented wrestler, you're going to be on your back every single time trying to do that. And that's one of the very few holes the Muay Thai style has. Unfortunately though, it's a pretty big one. On the feet, it's extremely difficult to deal with. In the clinch, it's going to be a nightmare fighting a talented Thai fighter. The elbows in short, the knees to the body, the foot sweeps. 
You have so much to worry about. Yet, all of that is neutralized if the stance doesn't allow you to defend takedowns well. Another issue worth bringing up, though, is the TIE Fighter's lack of boxing. Edson Barbosa might have the best Muay Thai we have ever seen in the UFC. And he absolutely brutalized some people with his insane kicks. His leg kicks and his switch kick to the body. So fast, no telegraph, and so much power. It's absolutely bone-chillingly scary to have to fight somebody like that. Not to mention the way he mixed in Taekwondo with some of those spinning wheel kicks. But you know what his issue was? His kicks were a lot better than his hands. So what people started realizing, if you pressure him, put him on the back foot, it makes it really hard to kick. And his hands were not at the same level as his kicks. So put him on the back foot and all of a sudden you can find your openings in the striking. This is how Justin Gaethje knocked him out. This is how Habib really neutralized his striking. And I mean, to be fair, Habib was also just the fucking Terminator that fight. This is an issue that plagues a lot of TIE fighters. They simply don't work on boxing that frequently. And that's why I think we've seen kickboxers have more success in MMA so far. But luckily, this issue has a pretty simple fix. Work on your boxing. With all this being said, there is a glaring question. Israel Adesanya started kickboxing at the age of 18, had a lengthy kickboxing career before starting MMA, and is now considered one of the greatest middleweights of all time. Where are the Thai fighters who grew up in a Thai gym at the age of 5, are masters at Muay Thai, and then at 18, 19, 20 started training MMA? You'd think on paper, these guys would absolutely run train on the entire UFC. Where are they? The issue, it's not a practical one, it's a cultural one. You see, in Thailand, fighting Muay Thai is seen as an honorable, respectable practice. To them, they are representing their country, their heritage, their culture, but the prospect of moving to a completely different art of fighting, like MMA, it's not something many of them are interested in. The fact of the matter is, MMA has not been popular in Thailand. Another big reason is, Thai fighters fight a lot. Some of them fight every single weekend, which is a huge difference between fighting here, where boxers and MMA fighters at most will fight three to four times a year. Because of this, it's rare to see a TIE fighter fight much longer past the age of 30. A lot of these guys need to retire young because of the damage to their bodies. With this all being said though, in recent years, one championship has been a bridge between Muay Thai and MMA. Their events mix kickboxing, Muay Thai, and MMA all on one card. Their Muay Thai fights are done in 4 ounce gloves. We've seen some hybrid MMA Muay Thai fights like Ra Tang versus Demetrius Johnson. And in one championship, we've even seen a lifelong Thai fighter fight in MMA. Yod, Yod Kaiko, Yod, Yod Kaiyu. This guy right here, they call him Y2K, and he's a beast. Just looking at his record, you can definitely see he struggled when it comes to the other aspects of MMA, like the grappling, for example, but he shows why Muay Thai is such a deadly striking art. The speed and ferocity of this guy's kicks in his MMA fights are insane. And as long as one championship keeps putting on these events, I think we're only gonna see more integration from Thai fighters to MMA. And once we see one of them truly master all the other aspects of mixed martial arts, they are going to be a serious, serious problem.